So, I've mentioned before on this channel that it's really important to learn SQL, especially if you want to work with data. And if you do want to learn SQL and you're looking for a book that teaches it well at a beginner level, then I have two books that I would like to recommend. Now, they're both very good. They're excellent. I have a favourite, and I'll tell you which one that is uh, at the end of the video or in a little while. But the two books are Learning SQL by Alan Bewley, uh, published by O'Reilly. Now, I've mentioned this before some weeks ago that I'd received this book and was going to work through it. I now have had a chance to do that. And also this book by No Starch Press, which is Practical Sequel, written by Anthony de Barros. Uh, these two books, actually, in what they cover, in the subjects and topics that they cover about sequel, are quite similar, but they have very different styles. And also, this book, the Practical Sequel uh, from No Starch Press, this covers Postgres, uh, and this book it is in MySQL, MySQL. But really that doesn't matter whether you learn the one that's the MySQL one or the Postgres one. In fact, in here, um, Alan Bewley says somewhere, um, there, this is not a book about MySQL's SQL implementation. I think you can see it there somewhere. I don't know whether that's focusing. So, so don't worry about that particularly, it doesn't matter. Let's start with the practical SQL book then. And let's have a look at what it covers. So if we look at the contents here, you can see that it covers, uh, well, there's an introduction and creating your first database and table, beginning data exploration with select. So these are the basics, understanding data types, importing and exporting data, basic maths and stats with SQL, joining tables in a relational database. So, it, and these are the, the basics of joining and then um, it, table design that works for you. So this is a really useful chapter because it explains why and how you should design your databases, which, you know, certainly for a beginner, that's very useful. Now, this book is sort of in two parts and the first seven chapters that's part one, if you like. And then we get into more uh, advanced topics with SQL. Inspecting and modifying data, statistical functions in SQL, uh, working with dates and times, advanced query techniques, you know, and this covers subqueries, which can be quite confusing. It confuses me. Uh, I find subqueries, you know, sometimes it's just, it's a, they take a little bit of getting used to, and it's very well explained in here. Uh, and then we have mining text to find meaningful data. Now, where this book differs from the other one is that there's a section on PostGIS or PostGIS. And it's nice that that's included and the other book doesn't have that. And then we have views, functions and triggers. And then this chapter, chapter 18, identifying and telling the story behind your data is a really important chapter. In fact, I made a, a video some time ago about how important it is to tell a data story. I want to tell you about an app that I've been using recently called Blinkist. Blinkist is sponsoring this video. And what they do is they take non-fiction books and they summarize them into 15 minute reads. They also have a narrated version available as well. So you can consume it as an audio book. And that's really good for me because I have to review a lot of books for this channel. I'm always reading technical books, which gives me very little time to read many of the non-fiction books that I want to read. But with Blinkist, I can consume those books and listen to those books while I'm doing other things. I can listen to them in a lot less time than it would take me to read them. So it's a very efficient way of getting a lot of information to me. Uh, and I can decide whether it's a book that I want to invest in to buy and invest the time in to read the full book. For me, it's great. And I think it might be something that would work well for you too. One book that I've been listening to on Blinkist recently is The Data Detective by Tim Harford. 10 Easy Rules to Make Sense of Statistics. And it's a great way of learning how statistics can be used to manipulate you and to make yourself less vulnerable to that manipulation. Other books I have in my library are Lean Analytics, Use Data to Build a Better Startup Faster, The Model Thinker, What You Need to Know to Make Data Work for You, and Hyper Learning by Edward D. Hess, How to Adapt to the Speed of Change. So those are some of the data books on Blinkist, but there are bestsellers too. 
I've never got round to reading Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari, A Brief History of Humankind, so I've added that to my library as well. I have a special link to Blinkist, which is blinkist.com forward slash Python programmer. It's in the description, and if you click on that, you will get a seven day free trial and 25% off premium membership. I really think you'll enjoy it. So stylistically, what's this book like? In terms of what they cover, these two books are, are very similar. If we take now a, a look at the learning sequel book from O'Reilly, and we look at what this covers. So we have a little bit of history on sequel, creating and populating a database, um, query primer. So this is the basics of querying a database and then filtering. So putting conditions into your queries and then querying multiple tables. So we have a little bit about joining here and then working with sets so we can understand the joins better. Both books have a lot of examples. They're well explained uh, and they have exercises at the end of each chapter. I prefer the narrative, the writing style of the No Starch book, but there really isn't very much in it. One thing I do prefer about this book is that it has the solutions in the back. Now that's very helpful when you're a self learner and the practical sequel book doesn't have that, although they have a similar number of exercises, you know, three or four exercises at the end of each chapter. It really just comes down to preference. If you want to have post gist, then I would go for the no starch. Uh, otherwise, they're very similar. You definitely don't need to buy both books. One or the other would suffice. And in the end, it just comes down to the style that you prefer. This book is ever so slightly more fun, a more engaging style. Both books are well written and give a thorough introduction to the subject. So I suppose it could come down to price. Uh, now I bought both of these books. I do sometimes get sent books and I have a few books that I've been sent recently, which I'm going to share with you soon. But I bought these ones from Amazon and I paid 23 pounds, I think, for this one and 23 pounds and something. And for this one, I paid now, where is it? 31 pounds. So this one was eight pounds more than this one. I'm not sure whether you can justify the price difference. So if you were going on price alone, and given the fact that I slightly prefer this book anyway, then I would choose this book. But if you like O'Reilly and you like their style and the way they present everything, then this would be a good choice for you. I know that isn't incredibly helpful. They really are sort of neck and neck in terms of what they teach and how they teach it. In the end, it comes down to your preference, but this is eight pounds more than this. I don't know what the difference would be where you are if you're not in the UK. I really enjoyed working through these two books and either would be an excellent choice to take you from beginner to intermediate with sequel.